I'm just going to bring you on my walk with me. It's a little hard to <laughs> keep my hand up like this and it feels a little weird, I'm not gonna lie. But uh, I'm up here in Coromandel Valley in the hills in my hometown. And uh, this morning I was uh, thinking that you know, life, our life purpose isn't really about safety. My mum was telling me this story of when she was 20 and she was with a girlfriend and her little car broke down and they were pretty far out of town there in the country and they had to get um, brought back by a, uh, by a big truck. And I thought, wow, that's such a cool story. And I haven't heard that before. And, and then I was talking to my, my friend who w was visiting a country town for work. And um, they stopped by a uh, you know, pit stop place. And there was a, a big bus full of school children. And so obviously they were on, you know, one of those school adventures, school trips. And she said in the bathroom, one of them was, you know, with his pants down, <laughs> holding a, a vomit bag. And he obviously had a touch of gastro or something, not feeling very well. And my friend said, you know, he's never gonna forget that trip. And I, I thought that's so true. It's, it's like we spend our time trying to attain safety and, um, and yet it seems that the most memorable, memorable parts, the most interesting parts of our lives are to do with the misadventures when things don't go the way we want or the way we planned or the way we expected and something new and unpredicted happens and it's not in the moment often pleasurable. Um, and so it occurred to me that, you know, this, the whole purpose of us being here really isn't about attaining that safety, even though society kind of organizes itself around this perception of safety and of course it's understandable, but actually it seems to be about story. <laughs> What's the story? And so I'm thinking it might actually be better for us to put ourselves in situations that give us a story to tell or a story to remember. And this is on the back end of my, you know, my dad coming towards the end of his life. And he's been put on palliative care with Alzheimer's. And so he, he doesn't know his own story. That's, his story has disintegrated. Um, we hold the story for him and we hold our versions of the story. that he doesn't know his own story. And then my mum invited me to one of her dear friend's birthdays. She's, she's 80 and amazing, full of energy and vitality. She looked great. And so at our table, um, everybody was like aged and of mostly they were Australian, British, um, and every man except for one at the table had been diagnosed with frontal lobe Alzheimer's, which is what my dad has been diagnosed with. And then later on, my mum was talking to, talking to someone else that she knew at a different table and her husband too had just been diagnosed with frontal lobe Alzheimer's. And so I wonder about that. 
you know, I wonder what, what it is, what, what, what it is in our environment, in our physical environment, in the individual body's environment, in our mental environment, emotional environment, spiritual environment, what it is that could be creating this phenomena. Because that right there is an epidemic to me. Right, Pro probably there were 50 people at the party and five people in the room. Actually, one of them couldn't be in the room. Actually, two of them couldn't be in the room because it was too advanced, but yeah, it's just amazing to me. So I think the most important thing is making sure that our, whatever we're taking in is supporting our lives, supporting our story. And I get that there's safety and sameness, but you know, maybe we're actually here to be spontaneous, not the same. All right, I've arrived at my little destination, so I'll talk to you later.